All right, welcome to Elixir Drops. We're going to get started today. We're going to make uh, a database for our app and we're going to use Ecto. So let's just create a trains app or something. I don't know. No, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to create a trains table. We're going to just create a basic app with the supervisor. So I added that sub flag and now I'm going to, and by the way, I'm just using the guides here, Ecto from Hexdocs. We're going to go over each of these four things. We're going to create a repo, which is our basic uh, wrapper for CRUD operations to the database. We're going to create a schema, which is the attributes for each table, a change set, which just allows us to make changes. And I'll show how that works in a minute. And then we'll be able to query our DB with the Ecto query. So first up, let's go ahead and open this up and go into our mix file. And we need to add some dependencies here. And I'm getting this straight from the hex docs in the background. You can't see it. So now we're adding Ecto SQL and Postgres, right? So let's go ahead and just uh, get our dependencies. And first up, we're just going to create a repo, generate a repo. We'll call it trains. This is just a little bit of like a helper function to get us going. And it will create the files we need to get started. So first off, it's going to, uh, once it's done, it's going to create, uh, it's going to configure our database for us. It's going to tell us what to do. We need to add this to our supervisor, which is why we created one in the first place. There we go. And it created this config for us. So it has configurations for our DB to Postgres. I don't have a username and password on my local DB, so I don't need that. Another thing we need to do here is to configure the Ecto repos. And so we're going to pass in what we're calling our repo like so. And now we should be all set up to create our actual database. So using Ecto, now we're going to create our Postgres database. Of course, there's no data in it. So we need to add a migration. Uh, we can do this like so. We're going to create our trains migration. Created these files for us. They are in this private directory here. And if you're coming from Rails, this is very familiar to you. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, this is, we're going to just create a table here and I'm just going to copy this over to save time. Like so, boom. So we're going to create a cars table with name, make, and, uh, like a car number. This should actually be number. Now that we have our table, we are going to go ahead and run our migration. So we can say mix ecto migrate, and that will create the database. So we haven't actually created the schema file yet. So we're not going to be able to talk to um, our database. So let's, let's follow the guide that I said I would follow. So we created our repo, we created the DB. Let's, let's go ahead and create an Ecto schema file. So to do that, we're just going to go inside of our trains directory, create a cars or let me singular car folder. And I'm going to actually go ahead and for brevity and save some typing. Here we go, except this is not car in this example, we called it num. And this is the database table name. So if you're coming, if you're migrating from Ruby and you have really bad Postgres table names, you can keep them here and rename them to whatever fancy name you want there. Um, so now that we have that, uh, let's go ahead and restart this shell and we should be able to see a train's car, right? So here we go. We've got a, this is our schema that we just made. It comes with an ID out of the box and we've got make name and num. And of course their attributes are nil. And if you're making one of these for the first time, then, you know, does Honda make trains? Uh, you would, you can put attributes in like so. And if you wanted to look at all of them, you could look across the trains repo. And of course this is going to give you back an empty array because we haven't done anything yet. Uh, but you can see it's actually building a query to the database and looking up retrieving all the cars, all the train cars. Uh, so let's create a change set while we're at it. So a change set, I'm going to again save some typing and just copy this guy over. But a change set looks like this and you would add this to your, to your, uh, your uh, schema file. So you have a, your schema and you usually have your change sets in the same modules. Um, so this allows us to basically take in params and filter out what's allowed so that, you know, if we say that we didn't want name to be editable, maybe we could take it out of there. Um, or if we only want to validate on name. So now when we have this in here, uh, if we restart this guy, 
and we want to make a change to an attribute. So let's go ahead and create a new car and we'll say the name is Honda and we will go ahead and uh, put that into our repo like so. So now when we do that query, we should get back our one car. Now, if we um, wanted this car, this is our train, uh, then we can send this into an ecto change set. So we have that trains repo change set function. Uh, sorry, trains car re <laughs> change set function. And if we wanted to change the num to be car number one, we could do so like that. Um, oh, yeah, this is from old code where I had the wrong thing. Uh, this is a good example, though. If I make a mistake and I want to change the file, I can just reload it like so. And now this guy will work. Now, you see, this returned us a change set object, like a struct, and it just says, whoa, what happened here? Uh oh here we go. Uh, and it just returned like these attributes and told us if, the, if this is valid, right? So it is valid. So now that we have our train, we're sending it into our change set, we're changing num, and we can update our repo like so by calling update. Now it says it's a little terse compared to Ruby and other languages. Uh, I think active records ORM is a lot sweeter really, but uh, it is a functional language. So it's a bit different how it handles that. But you can see here it added num to our train and we got a, back a nice tuple. So you'll see that a lot, uh, nice little tuples. So lastly, let's just look at how we can do some querying. Um, I'll go ahead and quickly add another train in here. Uh, let's see, where were we? Here we go. Let's say Toyota and uh, the make, I don't know, it's a 2016, uh, 2019. Uh, so now we have more trains. And if we look them all up, you see we got two. So if we were to do a query, first you need to require it. And you can require it in the module, but here we're just requiring it in IEX. And you would do something like ecto query where uh, the make is Honda. And now this is just gonna look, um, of course we're forgetting the first thing, trains car. So it builds out our query for us uh, from trains car where the make is Honda X source to run this. You're going to execute it against your repo like so. Uh, dot all. Oh, no Hondas. Ah, uh, make Honda. I said name. There we go. And we get back our one car. So that's in a nutshell, very briefly, not quite five minutes, but that's how you use uh, Ecto repo, how you get started in a project, how you can create these modules around your, um, around your data and even use them to query. So, uh, hope you found that video enlightening. I uh, hope you're excited to create your own schema files and change sets and, and get familiar with Ecto. It's really not so bad and their docs are pretty great. So thanks for watching.